seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, go. Stories Podcast, your number one show for everything guitar. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Guitar Stories Podcast. Hello, everyone. Andy, episode 40. 40. Oh, my goodness. What did we do? How did we do it? And where are we going from here? I have no clue. Actually, I don't no. even have a clue where we're going tonight. But anyways. Hello, everyone no. on the podcatchers out there. Hello, audio people. It's wonderful to be heard by you. Hello, people in the video, audio visual world. It's lovely to be seen and heard by you. We've got yet again another live streaming setup. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm feeling confident tonight, Dan. I'm feeling confident that things are going to go Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Uh, mainly because I spent half my day today sorting it out. But yeah, there's that. <laughs> How was your uh, okay. Week? Oh man! Apart from it's... apart from dealing with tech issues, well, Saturday night uh, I bought a camper van a, a while ago, and we slept in the camper van on yep. Saturday night for the first night, and wow. um, reali realized we may have wasted a hell of a lot of money <laughs> because it's really like, uncomfortable. You didn't, you didn't like it? <laughs> I, so, I couldn't walk the next day. My girlfriend was freezing cold, even though we had the heating on. The kids mm. had an amazing time. Um, yeah. So it was it was an experience. Uh, okay, fair enough. And uh, yeah, it was it was, it was good. I, I enjoyed it. It's just there needs to be a few a few adjustments, you know, much like yep, yep. everything in life. Very nice. How I'm about just you, Daniel? On, I'm 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 good. I'm I'm just wondering that Studio Shamil is uh, right on top of my head like four times. Do you know why that is? No, let me know. Because Studio Camille is the uh, official, unofficial podcast sponsor, because he gives awesome. us about, <laughs> about two bucks every week. And that um, amazing. people that donate in the super chat get their name on the screen. It just happens to be that Mikhail has donated four times, and um, it's only him. So if you're watching this and you'd like to be on the screen, then you need to make a super chat. Um, awesome. Also, also Dan, we have some overlays where you can be the boss. So, oh wow, I don't really know how this works. Want to be the boss? Well, I'm the boss currently. I don't want to be the boss. Quite honestly, okay. it shouldn't be me. But the only way to unseat me from boss level is to get more people subscribing to the channel, which apparently kills my my manner or something. It's, it's something to do with gaming. Or you can do a super okay. chat and it gives you like 300 points. Um, All right. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess last week's episode really got you into gamification, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're on a new platform. We're, we're I don't know. I, I really want to, to have a fun podcast. And you know me, I get bored if something's the same for a long time. So I just change it for no reason. Yeah, there you go. And Michiel donated two bucks again. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> Michiel is back at the top of the leaderboard. Well done, Michiel. Um, so, <laughs> actually, I find it really hard to set up uh, super chats on Google and YouTube. It's it's not easy to um, to set up. Okay. Oh, we got a super chat from Orange Amps. <laughs> there you That's go. Charlie, <laughs> Charlie Cooper. Gave us one pound, one English pound, which means that's about, I don't know, 20 cents in, in Europe now these days. <laughs> now you're the king of coffee money. That's right. So where, where? Oh, is, look, oh, look, look on screen. Origins. There, look oh, wow. on screen. I've lost 800, almost 800 health points. Wow. What, what happens so, if they're all gone? Um, then some, whoever, whoever does something else gets to be the boss so I, I get unseated so i don't know dan for yeah. example if you were to send a super chat then you yeah. would be the boss of the podcast <laughs> nice um, nice 
Sorry, sorry, the official boss. Until someone unseats you, until I give us a super chat now. Yeah, so Valeria's asking, is this Pokemon now? And pretty much, yeah, pretty much. Uh, Orange Amps, thanks for the super chat. Um, yeah. th thanks for the amps. You know, first and foremost, thank you for the amplification. Um, and we've got another super chat from Thomas Vogel. <laughs> <laughs> All this? the money we spend on ecam is now already. Uh, <laughs> so we're back. we're now we're now spending money on a live chat. Um, what's it called? Uh, platform, I guess. It's costing money. We're going to try and bring <laughs> it to you. Oh, come on, and Sarang. Now Sarang donated a one forty nine. There you go, pounds and a unicorn. He's sending us a unicorn. That's even. Thank better. you. You'll be on the leaderboard now. This is just yeah. to get me unseated, so it should it should update on screen when I, I lose health points. Here we go. 163 whoa, points whoa, left. Whoa, 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 whoa. What happens? I, like, it's, it's HP. I don't know. I don't Does Henning take over once it's gone? Oh, no. no. No, I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> um, a quick question. Quick question to the people watching right now. How is the audio? Because Dan and I have boosted our microphones because they were rather quiet in the last episode. And which is one of the mm -hmm. reasons we're using the software we have now. Um, so let us know how the, the sound is. And when we play the little stings, let us know how the balance is. I can um, I can affect it in live, live real time. Valeria tells us that our audio is good. That's good. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, yeah, this, this, is, this is excellent fun. I'm having a lot of fun, Dan. Yeah. And uh, I'm in my new surrounding, like, it's not my office. Unfortunately, no guitars, but it's also not the, the Dan Cave. So, oh, boy. Oh, boy. I'm, what just I happened? Have to interrupt. Five bucks from Michiel. So I'm so psyched to see what happens. I've definitely lost it. We've had su two Super Chats since you started talking about the Dan Cave. <laughs> what is going to happen? I don't know. I want to see it. What happens? What happens? It's crazy. Mike Michael says he needs to get a prepaid pre prepaid credit card for the super chat after he got scammed. Oh dear! I've got a prepaid credit card, Michael, and I absolutely recommend it um, for mm. you know for things like this. Uh, oh, here we go! Uh -oh. My health point. Oh, Studio Camille is now the boss of the chat of the podcast. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! <laughs> um, well, let's see what he can do with his power. Um, fun fact, fun fact, absolutely nothing. It's just, it's just that now you're officially the boss. And um, Mikhail, also thank you help for helping me test this software earlier um, because Dan was having some issues. Again, yeah. Again, yeah. Anyway, um, guitars are fun, aren't they? They are, they are. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Valeria is also saying the image quality is better on Twitch. Well, don't... Don't don't abandon YouTube There's, unless I don't know. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so we are live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. I'm super excited. I actually forgot to have my coffee, my pre-show coffee. So um, I'm oh, turning wow. it on a little bit, but uh, we'll see what happens. We've got a special guest tonight. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing his name correctly. How do you pronounce Anthony's name? I think Garone. Garone or Garone? Okay, Garone. I said Garone earlier, but. Um, He's he's not here to notice, but uh, yeah. Uh, Mikhail, by the way, I have changed the the link to be a guest on the show. So if you do click that link, nothing's going to happen because uh, Mikhail was on the show earlier. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I am more than happy to bring Mikhail in at the end and send him the new link because that's the kind of person we are. Maybe, maybe the boss of the of the chat should get to come on the show at the end. That would be nice. Is a <laughs> would be nice as a yeah. punishment. <laughs> I was about to say as an encore, but as a punishment, why not? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Have we got some news, Dan? I don't know. Let's check. That was the news. So this must be the news. Oh, who's that? I don't know. Probably part of the news. Probably part of the mm. news. Um, I didn't know you were going to go full screen for this. So, oh, uh, I'm sorry. Oops. I haven't I'm set back. that up for that. You're back. Um, yeah, go on then, Dan. <laughs> Tell us some news. Yeah. So, great news of the week, actually. A beautiful guitar. The Flame, Joe Satriani-owned stage 
played guitar sold for the Jason Becker fundraiser at a whopping 68,000 euros. Isn't that great? I mean, that the cost itself is great, and that is insane too. You can take a look here. It says 68,000 bucks. Yeah, it's crazy. That's amazing, right? And that, that's yours. Right? Oh, yeah, yours. That's yeah, yours. Yeah, that's yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, it's a great guitar that has been uh, played on the G3 tour already back in the day. And um, I talked with the guy who painted it, Nicholas Del Drago. Want to hear the story? I'd love to. All right. Let's uh, take an image from here so you can see it right there. All right. So the backstory behind that guitar. And that's pretty interesting. Um, he got approached by Joe Cetriani because he knew him from his days in the Bay Area. So he used to, to gig with Joe when he was a little bit younger. So they, they played in different bands, but obviously, you know, had a couple gigs all together. And uh, yeah, so they, they got to know each other. And what happened is that uh, at one point, um, Joe got aware that Nick ha was having a um, shop where he was painting custom bikes, you know, cool paint jobs with flames and, and, and cool graphics. So Joe decided it would be great to, to get a guitar painted in a similar style. And that uh, shop was called Vicious Cycles, <laughs> which is a cool name. Ah, uh, that is a good name. Yeah, vicious cycle. That's pretty cool. So, um, so Nick Nick Del Drago basically um, did this guitar as a one-off, and uh, yeah, like I said, the rest has been history. It's been used on uh, a couple of occasions, and you know, has been almost become an iconic piece of gear among uh, Satriani fans because it features um, the flamey look, and it's been played by him, and it is a super cool piece to own. You can see it here, Del Drago painted in. 2002 for Joe. And now here's the fun fact. He told me that this guitar had been um, had been copied several times, but very few people prior to the auction have ever seen the back actually. So whenever they tried to whenever they tried to copy the paint job, they actually did it wrong. And that led even to one guy claiming that he was the original designer of the paint job, <laughs> which is funny, you know. And it was it was cool to see. Um, he told me that um, after, especially after the G three tour, he he's been approached by a couple, 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 uh, you know, guitar geeks that wanted to have the exact same guitar being remade. You know, guys from Russia and and other territories where probably there's a lot of, uh, you know, oil money and stuff like that. So they they approached him, but he had signed a deal that he's not able to recreate that uh, one by one. So he had to decline those offers, but that would have been easy money back in the day, which is uh, pretty cool to see that he, you know, sticks to to what he's agreed with Joe. And um, yeah, well, that's that's basically the whole story. It's It, it started from a white JS guitar and, uh, you know, within the, the Vicious Cycle paint job, uh, paint shop it became a cool iconic piece of gear and now it's doing a lot of good for the jason becker fundraiser and uh, you know with sixty thousand bucks i think uh, they will be able to help with medical treatment for jason and this is pretty cool so thanks nicholas for telling us the story and also thanks to for joe for gifting that it's always cool to see that positive uh, attitude in the guitar scene that all those heroes guitar heroes and legacy artists are supporting each other i really i really dig that yeah, that's it. It's, it's How a do you like money it? And a, and a great calls. Um, I think the guitar is great. I, I, I love it. It does look like a motorcycle. And I, and <laughs> I, I, I had a shirt that looked exactly like that uh, in about 2000. So, yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, not one of my best choices, but it looks better on a guitar than it did on me. Let's put it that way. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I like the guitar. I mean, the guitar is itself is going to be great as a as a player, but also as a a piece of uh, art and history. And for a good cause, amazing. Well done to have. Do you mm. know who bought it, or is it is it a is a hidden hidden purchase? Or? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 Could I, be I, someone I, like Hard Rock or something. Possible, but I I would rather gravitate towards that there is a, a a collector you know there there have been already so many collectibles like the js art series you know where, where joe did all the scribbles on the guitars and those guitars they were already expensive like six or seven k and they you know they just went out of the window and were gone 
In the in the wind, in the wind. Okay. In the wind. Um, Gone in the wind. My turn. My turn for news. Um, this is a personal yeah. one, Dan. Uh, what? Well, oh, wow. I've got two pieces of news. The first one is a a less personal one. It's about uh, Oasis, the band that um, famously uh, Noel Gallagher said that he wouldn't. Mm-hmm. There's no price that he would be paid to to reform Oasis, mm-hmm. and um, he said that uh, his brother Liam turned down or, or turned down a, a very high number. Now Liam Gallagher has said he will reform Oasis for absolutely free, um, which I'm sure is just <laughs> a dig to annoy his brother. And as a <laughs> as a person who grew up with oh, Nirvana, just happened to wear the T-shirt, and heavily influenced by Oasis at the time, they were all over the charts. And yeah, it was so. I made a lot of money in covers bands playing their songs, and um, I would love to see Oasis reform. Um, yeah. Oh, Dan's phone is ringing. Oh, he's got a you got a pet bird. <laughs> Don't try and mute your mic. <laughs> <laughs> we all we all heard your bird singing. Um, oh yeah, yeah. So so Oasis uh, could reform. I just wonder what people thought about that. Would there be an audience for Oasis in say 2022? Could they bring back live music? Imagine it. Imagine imagine all the people. Well, I think two very different questions. Could they bring back live music? I don't know if, the, if live music needs a band like Oasis to actually be brought back. I think there are a lot of bands that are desperately looking to play live. It doesn't need a big band like Oasis to be back. But uh, would people appreciate it? Pretty sure. I mean, I can people think of at least out. three people. Yeah, yeah, three. That's that's probably without, a good number. Without even thinking, I can think of two or three. Yeah, that's probably enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they would fill stadiums, of course. I mean, those are that's the caliber of band that you would you would expect to play Wembley Stadium or something. It's just yeah, they'd have to be a really good name, like Looking Back in Anger or something like really crap tour. The Looking Back in Anger tour, or uh, I don't know. Has, has there never been a tour with that name? No, definitely not. It's too bad a name. Oh, well, um, I, I mean, they could alter that. Like, uh, you remember when the Eagles they decided to 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 reform, when, like form again and, and do them, the right? unplug? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was pretty smart. I mean, yeah. I would love to see something happen if Oasis should ever decide to get back on stage together. Well, it kind of links me into my next piece of news, my personal news, because I was going to say if they do, oh, hang on, Alexis mm. Guitars, Oasis for next year's UK Eurovision entry. <laughs> 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 oh never never also can we please get studio camille off the boss chat please he's just he's just lost 10 points let's get him down a bit more um the personal news uh on june the 10th of 2021 i will be turning the grand old age of 40 years old oh my goodness uh-huh. is he really that old yes he is well i have uh a competition to run because I wanted to achieve 40,000 subs by the time I was 40. And mm-hmm. as we discussed with Dave uh, recently, that, uh, what was it, relationships are... Hang on, Dan, you say it better than I do. Relationships are key, what was it? No, 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 Relation- he said, like, numbers Numbers are just leverage. Numbers are just leverage, yes. So, um, mm-hmm. so the number 40,000 subs doesn't really... You know, I'm not saying it doesn't matter, but it's less important to me than just doing what I do and loving it and, and talking to the people who already have. But, and <laughs> however, however, I still want to achieve that number because I'm going to miss it by less than a thousand, which is ridiculous. Um, so what I'm doing is I've teamed up with a few brands. One of brands I haven't spoken to yet, but maybe I get to talk to my main man at that company soon. You know, maybe... Maybe there's someone I know who who would you know maybe have to talk to me about something. But anyway, I'm going to give away <laughs> forty prizes. Okay, forty, not that fourteen, sounds... forty. They're going to range amazing. from software to actual guitars with pedals and things in the middle. I've got several sponsors lined up already, and um, that's that's the news. So forty prizes. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Valeria's asking if it's someone who can give me a hoodie. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Someone who can deliver. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, so 40 prizes. I'm going to do from software. I'm going to do it on a live stream. There's only one real rule, and that is the channel has to have over 40,000 subs on June the 10th. You do not have okay. to sub to the channel, but the channel has to have over 40,000 subs. Do you hear okay. what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> from Facebook, Ian Johnston, get a hot dog. <laughs> oh, it's not from Facebook, it's from YouTube. Yeah, um, <laughs> Sanifa is asking for a framed lock of fro. I can add, I can add a framed piece of hair if you really, really want to. <laughs> um, Hot Pole Studios, they can deliver, but do they do chicken and fish? Wow. Wow. Uh, okay, deep. yeah, so it, let's not spend too long on that because I will be doing the official announcement on the channel this week when we have 14 days in which to do it. So, um, hmm. yeah, I, nice. I think we got, I, I but how, make... do you, how do you, how do you pick to people? Like if you, if you say you don't have to be subscribed, will there be like a separate entry for, for every single price you can get? Or is that like, I don't there know, is a website, which, which totally controls this kind of thing. All right. And you would have to, so you can get like, as far as I see it, I'm still talking to the people to sort it out. Um, but you would enter the competition with either a sub or a like or a comment or an email address. I have to make sure it's done above board and I'm still talking to the people to make sure that it's possible because giving away 40 prizes mm -hmm. is actually quite complicated. So they currently set it up so you give away one prize per draw. But of course, okay. me being me, uh, I want to do it 40, 40 things. So you don't have to enter 40 times. But anyway... It will happen. It will happen around the tenth, probably afterwards, because I may celebrate um, a little bit myself with some 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 friends that I have, you know, like real life friends or virtual real friends. life flesh <laughs> flesh meat bags skeleton wow people yeah <laughs> if I can persuade them but yes um, so that's happening um, is a slight preview here on the podcast because I love you. Nice. Yeah. Um, stream's still working, Dan. We still seem to be in control. Studio Camille is still the, the boss. I'm going to stop going on about that. But uh, I do want to know if you've got any gear picks, Dan. Yeah, I have. Like, at least one. Okay, then um, let's do Dan's Pick of the Week. Dan's Pick of the Week. Dan's Pick of the Week. <laughs> Am I big Hello. again? Hello. Hello. So, hey, my pick of the week. What's that? Is what are you looking at? It's a, a white guitar. Yeah, that's a Godin or Godin Les Paul inspired copy. And it's the Summit Classic AT, HT with uh, high definition voice or active passive pickup switching. Um, I picked it because I, I it, it kind of reminded me of the old um, BFG Gibsons. Okay, you yeah, know? I see. I mean, the yeah, picture's yeah, not yeah. that clear, if I'm honest. Um, but uh, if you if you're either watching or listening to the audio version, imagine it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically, it looks like a, a a pretty reduced Les Paul like melody maker or Les Paul special kind of really really like reduced to to what's essential, right? Sorry, and, I, I think uh, I have to interrupt you. I think Hot Pole Studios, Dan, is trying to teach us how to pronounce it by typing it okay. in. <laughs> oh wow! Thanks for that. How do you do? How do you do that? It says, <laughs> "Yeah, good on, good on, good on." I mean, Andy, Andy, you're you're pretty pretty fluent in English, uh, in, in in English, yeah, in, in French too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. very How much would so. you announce it? Yeah. <laughs> How would you pronounce it? Go down. Go down. Yeah. So, so it's like it's like the opposite of stay Dan. It's go Dan. <laughs> <laughs> People are not going to believe that you didn't prepare that. <laughs> you know me, mate. I am I am on the edge of comedy at all times. And then <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Oh. So, Daniel. Oh, yeah. So, 24. So, tell us. Seven, tell us. Yeah. 
yeah, silver leaf maple neck uh, with 12 inch radius, 22 frets uh, on a rosewood fretboard, graph tech nut, two nomadic bridge, stop tail tailpiece, uh, stop tail, stop bar tailpiece, one, two, three. <laughs> yeah, base wood body. Um, and that's, that's quite an interesting recipe. And uh, I think what's so special is that under the hood, the guitar comes with a pair of uh, humbuckers. Uh, I think they call it a custom Goudon in the neck position and a custom zebra in the bridge. And um, yeah, I always had a, had a soft spot for Goudon guitars because uh, usually they provide a lot of bang for the buck and they are like Canadian made. So, you know, it's not an overseas guitar. And I think this would hold true for these two, but they are still Canadian made. And um, yeah, I mean... With, with their voicing options that they offer, I think it would be a very versatile guitar in a Les Paul-inspired shape if you're on the market for a guitar like that. So um, you can change the pickups from active to passive, so Ooh. which is pretty much like I would I would imagine to go from a, a more like traditional vintage-oriented tone to a more more aggressive and and bitey tone. And uh, yeah, I really like it that they come up you know, with with stuff like that at around eleven hundred bucks. And uh, I think they also have another color available. Let me pick that for you, um, which would be this one, Havana Brown. And uh, can you see that? Yeah. Oh, that so. I like. Now I can see what you were saying about the BF, uh, BFG. I can see the finish yeah. is kind of maybe not scaly, but certainly um, textured. It's not super glossy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not super glossy. It's more like a... I know, like semi gloss, low gloss uh, kind of finish. I'm digging that. Yeah, yeah. It it just so, I, when I saw it, it, it just it just appealed to me. It looked very yummy, and I was intrigued to kind of pick it up and and, and give it a shot. Especially remind with the, me of the name, the Dan. What's what's the name of this guitar? Uh, well, it's, it's a, <laughs> I'm not in a position to say that, but it's got a super catchy name. It's called the Summit Classic HT. What's wrong with that? No, nothing. Summit Classic HT. Yeah, I mean, it's like just Summit Classic HT. It's better than numbers and, and letters, but it's pretty random, right? It is oh, pretty random. It... I, I... Yeah. Yeah, Sarang is saying it reminds me of an LP studio. It does. Um, a friend of mine has an LP studio that, look, studio that looks a lot like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. People in the chat are saying this one looks a lot better. I absolutely agree. Uh, the white one, maybe we didn't get a good, good enough picture quality, but um, that one is, I'm, I'm digging that one. And also go down a, a pretty well priced as well, as far as I know. They're not, considering yeah. that they're made, um, although someone's saying that European go down, Paul is saying that European go down is assembled in Berlin. Um, oh, wow. I didn't know that. I I can't, can't clarify that. I, I certainly can't back that up. But um, either way, I've... I've been. I had a go down before. I had a, um, an electric go down many, many years ago. I had an acoustic Fifth Avenue go down. This jazz guitar, which was absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Um, still sold it, you know, but absolutely brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know how it is. And uh, I went yeah. to see them at. I think it was. Wow, it was Music Messer in in 2018. Oh dear, and. Um, they're really nice people. They had a lot of good stuff going on. Uh, they were just kind of hidden in the acoustic hall, though, so I kind of missed it. Um, what's Charlie saying? Charlie's saying he loves the color. If Nescafe <laughs> made a guitar, that's the color they'd use. Hell yes, Mr. Cooper. It's tasty, um, right? It really, tasty. really. I, I, I don't know. It's kind of because it's it's reddish. It's. I hope it looks yeah. as good in the flesh as it does in that picture. But uh, right off chestnut, basically yes it's an autumn guitar that is that's a guitar that you yeah. sit outside with a jumper on and and play it the dark roast <laughs> santa for oh my goodness we've got some great comments in people are so so wonderfully um creative yeah uh, if you haven't seen this guitar if you're listening go and check out what was it down the ht i've forgotten <laughs> <laughs> there you go because it's so arbitrary I know, no, wait wait I, the the guitar summit music messer nam ht <laughs> summit classic ht yeah i read That's the comment that some, some someone said it's funny seeing an ivanis guy mocking other brands for the names and i said like i'm not in a position to do it or i shouldn't do it but i just find it funny that they kind of picked two of the most random names especially in the guitar scene summit and classic 
<laughs> you could you could probably say this guitar is the summit of uh, craftsmanship. You know, it's a it's a real classic. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it. I wonder if it means something like poetic in French, and then they translated it into English, and it doesn't quite work. You know that. Mm -hmm. I'd like to. Th let's go with that, shall we? Yep. <laughs> whereas, whereas with Ibanez guitars, it's like they throw a calculator down the stairs and say, "Yep, that'll do." <laughs> Did you see that meme where there was that, that that kind of machine that was just randomly picking numbers? You know. Like a head, a bobble head kind of going up and down. Not a bobble head, but you know, you get what I say. The the bird like, thing, yeah. The bird thing, yeah. The pick that that picked like randomly <laughs> on the on the keyboard on the keyboard. That was that was pretty funny. Yeah, and actually, it was like full disclosure. It was shared internally too, so people ah. liked it in Japan. <laughs> Who throws a shoe? Bit of Austin Powers creeping its way in there. Okay, um, do you have any more yeah. picks, Dan? Nope, I don't. But you have, okay. right? I, I do. I do indeed. I, I actually have two, one of which I have with me. Mm. Oh, show me more. Andy's Pick of the Week. Mm -hmm. Two pedals that are new but not new. The Metal Zone. Uh, and the Super Overdrive SD1 um, are being reissued as the Blackout. I don't know if that's what they call them, but the Blackout. The Boss SD1-4A and the MT23A. So you might guess the SD1 is having its 40th anniversary and the Metal Zone is having its 30th anniversary. So for one year, these pedals are going to be available in black. And I absolutely have to have them because I have the Blackout S, uh, DS one. And <laughs> they have a, Dan, Dan, they are so full of tone because they have a silver screw. Silver screw boss it? pedals. It's on, nice. on the battery enclosure. Oh, oh, down there. Okay. Yeah. 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 Great, um, great job. Yeah. They're, they're quite affordable as well. I think it's fifty nine ninety nine roughly for the Black SD one. And wow. not much more, but more for the MT2 um, 4A, 3A, sorry. They're going to have commemorative boxes with their anniversary logos printed on them. And wow. um, this begs for a shootout, Dan, between, you know, a regular yellow one, SD1, and, mm -hmm. and a black one. Yeah. Because we've got to know, does it sound better? Probably, yeah. I mean, especially with the anniversary packaging, it will probably sound... Five percent better, at least, and then the silver <laughs> screw, of course, adding uh, much more silver screw tone. It adds gain, uh, like like, you know, it's just it's just the tone will just stay for ages. I I, I hope so. Uh, um, yeah, the sustain will be there. The, the you know the gain level is spot on. The sustain will be there. It's just no no. I love it. It's it's cool to see that they are doing a something that is quite contrary to what's happening in the market because what i understood is that those pedals will be available throughout the whole year right yes um i think they're gonna make so much money from this which is ridiculous isn't it as you say contrary to the to the trend um yeah. i mean i i love boss stuff and and people that watch the channel know that and i think boss can rarely do wrong hang on no i retract that boss do silly things all the time <laughs> <laughs> um, such as the katana air was a great product but not good enough for the price it was it was just way way expensive and then the headphones not sure if they're too expensive either the waza airs um even though they're apparently great still haven't tried them thank you very much boss okay. and um there's other stuff that boss do but they just kind of i don't know they make funny decisions sometimes however i still love them and yeah, industry standard. Yeah. Yeah, so so that's I mean, my first pick. That's my first pick. Just let me let me add one thing that um you know, not selling those as super exclusive uh super duper expensive um you know, very limited pedals kind of you yeah. know, get scalpers scalpers out of the equation. I like that a lot. You know, you, we've seen that with the the tone bender pedal for instance. 
you know, they are going for crazy money nowadays. But announcing those pedals and you know letting people know they are going to uh, to, to be sold throughout the whole year, kind of you know removes that leverage for people to to buy a dozen of those and then put them on reverb for crazy money. And I really like that. I really like that because you know not everyone is you know like us checking gear news and and, and uh, guitar world and all those sites every day and checking the the manufacturer websites. You know there are some people that will you know just see it in their store and, and you know probably see that limited edition when they occasionally walk into their their go to store and then pick it up. And that's that's kind of beautiful. I really like that. To, yeah, I, I didn't. I spoke over you earlier, so I didn't really understand what you mean. But that is exactly true. And um, well done, boss. Well done for letting us normies uh, stay in the loop. Even though I, I have got a, a tone bender coming, <laughs> yeah. and I, I may, to be honest, I may have been on a list. You know. Yeah. Um, I, I have some. I've seen questions from coming up. Um, Sarang earlier asked me if my master drive is here. It is. Um, that is not my pick of the week. I've got a video coming on the master drive very, very soon. And I'm attached to the keyboard or computer. I can't leave. And it's not in the room with me. So, uh, Dan, your FPS has dropped to something where people think there's some kind of ventriloquist thing happening. But now you seem to be back. <laughs> yeah, I just switched from the OBS virtual cam to my regular. Okay. regular I thought cam, that was the case. So okay, uh, my second pick of the week, yeah. Dan, is rather controversial and the reason i've chosen it is because i need to know if i should make a video on it without getting too much trouble um it's a guitar by fender comes in a really nice case so we can't argue that the case is nice whoops not my mic over sorry it's the acoustic sonic <laughs> jazz master nice um, in so white. I want to know, is it safe for me to make a video yet? Which I kind of posted on, on my social medias, but I, I want to ask, you know, oh, there's my tuner. I lost my tuner a while ago. There it is. <laughs> um, I should have used it. Oh, there's a pick in the, in the strings. That's why. Oh, it's terribly out of tune. No, it's in, um, it's in dadgad. Oh, open tuning. Did you set it up like that, or did you come from factory? No, I was, I was, uh, I, I did it myself. I was outside. Um, All right. I was outside jamming on it, and I must say, as a precursor to the review video slash whatever it is, apology, um, I've had a lot of fun with this guitar, and I sat outside for about ninety minutes and just lost time with the guitar, and that's always a good sign. Mm -hmm. And it smells nice as well. <laughs> um so we've got we're ranging from oh god kill it kill it from from adam at hot pole studios to woo from valeri which I, I assume it's um referencing the guitar either that or she's just having her own private party um <laughs> then sarang is also if it's yours to keep make a video after a month of using it and address the is this needed question well i actually um my first question, well, there is the question, do we need this as a guitar? This sort of kind of rhetoric, so, so don't answer that at the moment, then. But um, <laughs> I wanted to know who this guitar is for. Like, what's, what's going on? It's an electric acoustic thing. It can do pedals and amps and stuff, but it can also do acoustic. And then, and this might be the subject of the video, who is this video for? Who is this guitar for? It may be me. It may be the perfect guitar for me. Hmm. Which, uh, which is not something I want. To, it sounds like you know horrible things that I'm being paid to say, which it isn't. Although I'm being paid and I have the guitar, but um, <laughs> I like singer-songwriter acoustic-y kind of music that I go out and I busk and I play in in, in bands and stuff that are acoustic-based. But I also mm -hmm. love fuzz pedals. So logically. Jazzmaster Acoustic Sonic. Also, I'm a big bloke, so the telly and the Strat are too small for me. I love Jazzmasters. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and if you're wondering why I got the white one, because that's the one that Dan said I should get. Did I? Dan's. Yeah, you said you should get the white one. You like the white one best. Hmm. Come on, don't lie to me now. Okay. Um... <laughs> 
Okay. Yeah. So I am going to play. I have played it already for a week and a half, so it's not actually new to me. I made sure that I I generally like to play guitars for a little while before I make a video. Mm -hmm. um, it's not always the case because I don't always get that luxury. But if I do have the luxury, I make sure that I do. And so far, the Fender Acoustasonic Jazzmaster is getting a thumbs up from Andy Ferris, the guitar geek. Great, great. So that's my second pick of the week. I don't expect anyone to burn that. Oh, I've just realized I forgot the the the, the one the one sting we haven't added. So I'm going to have to add that ad hoc. Uh, I don't know how to do that. I don't, know if, I don't even know if ad hoc is the right word. That's just a word I made up. Uh, You'll wing it. I'll wing it. Right, what we got? That <laughs> Fender is the most expensive tool you could buy. Name a single pro of statue that does or would play one. Sting. Well, Sting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, uh, Emily Blunt, who is not a pro guitarist, but she is a pro artist, which includes music. Um, yeah. But yeah, sorry, Paul. Sorry, sorry that we both jumped on you then, but <laughs> Dan and I knew the answer to a question. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, you got to be fair. I mean, not not every every guitar will be a big sales success, but at least there will always be, always be a few people that appreciate it just for what it is. And uh, I'm, I'm digging that. I mean, like like you just said, if it's for you, it might be not for nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine other people, but it's for you. So fair enough. And I will say, it. I will say that at the price it's at, it's it's quite a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's quite yeah. a lot of money. Um, that being said, when I make the video, maybe it delivers. Um, but I, I promise you, I'm really going to put work into really, really trying this guitar. Not just, you know, here's the Acoustic Sonic Jazzmaster. <laughs> um, maybe yeah. it could be like RJW14 has said, this shape probably Jim Root. I could do if Jim Root did an acoustic or unplugged Jim Root. That'd be quite fun. Slipknot unplugged. Slipknot unplugged, yeah. That would be nice. I've got my orange amp back there. I can I can do some Jim Root stuff and and that would actually be really nice. Just imagine their songs being kind of completely restructured in a acoustic style and, and, and yeah layout um, layout. I, 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 I could. See I don't that. know how to add because we're on this new software. I don't know how to add the the by burn thing, but I'm going to try it anyway. So <laughs> okay. live live on the show, I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, this could end everything as it did earlier, but um, we'll see what happens. Uh, here we go. Oh, my goodness. It did it without the audio. Oh, so you got to do it. Play, play it again and you do the audio. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good idea. Well done. It's, not, it's, no, it's, it's definitely not working now. <laughs> Shoot. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Buy, borrow, or burn. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, wait. Oh, I didn't even tell anybody. We've got sound effects. Listen. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've got a, a sound a soundboard. Hang on. Uh... <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, just one more, one more. I, I, I'm, you are so lucky, everybody, that I forgot this was there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apologies apologies okay so buy borrow or burn um we're going to the chat michaela's already answered michaela's still the boss by the way in case anybody wants to unseat him michael has said buy a boss pedal borrow andy's fender burn the godan Ooh, interesting i didn't expect that um uh, michael which one would you buy though the sd1 uh 4a or the mt2 3a uh, la 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 la. Quickly, unplugged Slipknot and Stone Sour, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Unplugged and unmasked. There we go. There's the tour. You people are doing the work for them. Um, that could be the name, right? That would that would go unplugged and unmasked. <laughs> yeah, that'd be amazing. Okay, Valeria will buy the buy a boss pedal. Which one? Borrow the Fender of Curiosity and burn the rest. Sorry, Dan. Mm. No worries. It's not Jake Dan, Dan, Dan's secure enough to not be apologized to, aren't you, Dan? All good. 
Um, sorry, I'm just receiving messages about the podcast. So no, it's um, it's not not happening. Nothing's happening. Um, uh, la 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 la. Uh, Fergie in France. Buy an ST1 and the MT2. Borrow the Godan and burn the Fender Hollow Jazzcaster. That's what I was expecting. That's that's a good <laughs> answer. That's a um, not a good answer, but a an expected one. Um, did I buy a stream deck for that? Did I program to admit it? No, it comes parts. Sorry, people, I'm talking now. People are asking questions about the sounds. What sounds, you ask? These sounds. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have a stream oh, deck, boy. but I did not buy it for that. I did, also didn't buy it for this. <laughs> <laughs> did you buy it for that? For what? This? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's the sound we play when dan says the i word oh yeah that's good <laughs> ibanez yay ibanez. i preempted it oh hang on ibanez. so every time i say ibanez you're going to play that ibanez jingle stop it <laughs> 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 Sorry. All right. That, that gets a <laughs> yellow I've card. Always wanted... That that sounds like you know you know what reminds me that reminds me of those old Konami football games you know like international superstar soccer or pro evolution soccer they had sound effects just like that. They did. Sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm just receiving a message from Charlie Cooper as of Charlie Cooper Orange Amplifiers. Oh wow. He sent me a message, and then he unsent it. The plot thickens. He says, here's one for the podcast, if you like, and then says something that I'm not allowed to say. So it's exclusive for you, as in us. Wait, I should check in advance to see if I'm allowed. <laughs> so we may have an orange exclusive on the podcast tonight, but we may not, because last time I was told I was allowed an exclusive, it turns out I wasn't allowed. So I announced the pedal baby about six months before Orange did. <laughs> but luckily, my channel was so small at the time, nobody noticed. <laughs> so, That's uh, amazing. Yeah. So, <laughs> so buy, borrow, burn. <laughs> buy, borrow, burn, anyway. Sarang will buy an SD1, borrow the Fender, and burn the Godan, which for never, forever will be called the Godan, as in leave, Daniel. <laughs> uh, oh boy one euro every time i've heard that sentence anyways yeah. uh, <laughs> andrew bimson buy the godan okay someone's buying the godan borrow the mt2 nice. burn all acoustasonics that's fair valeria's gonna buy the yeah. sd1 if you're listening on the audio version then you can join the discord and let us know which ones you'd buy sorry little pre-podcast oh no during podcast um Plug there for the Discord. Buy the Godan, tune it to Dadgad for some Kashmir. Nice. Borrow the Fender. Got to see what it's about. I like it. Burn the boss pedals. Oh, okay. Fair enough. You've got enough gain as it is. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, Poo Ninja says Ibanez, Ibanez, Ibanez. <laughs> uh, so? According to the, the stream, it's it's a, it's a glockenspiel. Um, are we getting news on tonight's guest, Dan? Yep. I'll fill you in in a second. Let's just finish by borrow or burn. So, Dan, um, I'm going to guess that you will buy the boss pedals, borrow the Jazzmaster, burn the Godan. No. <laughs> Okay. Oh, no, pulse. No. Yeah. You got I was I was really like making up my mind because I like the boss pedals and uh, but I'm not a pedal collector. Sorry guys. Okay. So okay. um I probably buy the Godon because it's at least the Godons that I play so far, they have provide a lot of bang for the buck. I borrowed the Jazz Master, the Kusa Sonic from you, just to see, you know, how it competes. Thank sure, you. Sure. And then I I would have to to burn the uh, the pedals, but at least I would keep the com uh, commemorative packaging just as a reminder to you, you can't know, for my you got to burn it in the box. All right, then I do that. 
Not sure we can be friends anymore. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Okay. What should I what should I um what should I do? Guess me, guess me. Well, you would definitely if you haven't already pre-ordered the pedals, buy the boss pedals. Borrow the Jazzmaster Acoustic Sonic, maybe from Fender, and maybe to forget you have to send it back or anything like that, and burn the good dog. No. Oh wow. Okay. Tell me more. I'm intrigued I... to hear what do you would do. I would you got it right. I would buy the boss pedals, but as a YouTuber, I would burn the Jazzmaster Acoustic Sonic just for the views. <laughs> or you would like throw it out of a plane. Yes, something like that. Uh, but just for the views, yeah. Since it's an acoustic but... guitar, you could actually play it while skydiving. Do you want more personal news? I'm too fat to go skydiving. No way. Not too fat, too tall, right? Either way you want to look at it. My weight is too much because for my what's, 40th what's, birthday, I was asked what I wanted. And I said, I've always wanted to go skydiving. And I thought, well, if you don't do it when you're 40, you can't, you know, why not? And someone uh -huh. offered me something big. So I said, yeah, go on then. And then uh, I say, someone, my girlfriend, what do you want for your 40th? I want to jump out of the plane. <laughs> I hate my life. <laughs> and uh, parachute. No, thank you. And... <laughs> The limit was 90 kilograms, and I'm pushing 100 kilograms, which is about 200 pounds if you're in uh, Freedom Land. And the person wow. who oh. goes with you has to be bigger than you, and they don't have anyone mm. bigger than me, which is ridiculous. So it's like an artificial threshold. There's not not such uh, such an idea of like having a weight, a maximum weight that is like 90 kilos, because I've I've definitely seen like taller and and larger people skydive, but yeah. You know. Yeah, so what I'm saying is if, oh. if you know how to skydive with a, with a tandem and you're over 100 kilos to 20 pounds, then um, hit me up because I want to go skydiving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, Poo Ninja made, made just said Guitar stuff. Max can help you out, push you from his plane. Guitar Max is a pilot. There you go. <sighs> All right. Might try and sort that out. Thanks, Poo Ninja. Yeah. Always got my back. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I would burn the Acoustic Sonic just for the views. Do it for the video. All right. And you would borrow uh, the Godon so for I'd me? Borrow the and... Godin. Okay. Actually, I would, but the reason I would borrow the Godin is because I actually want to play it. Okay. So I Fair have enough. to burn the Acoustic Sonic, which fits nicely with being a guitar based YouTuber. <laughs> See? Well, I love the way that life just sometimes comes together and sorts itself out for you. Master plan. All right. So, guys, are you surprised? I am. I would have thought that Andy would never burn the Acoustic Sonic, but that would probably make for a couple, a couple of views, at least like three or four. You know. Yeah, at least at least four, and that would be me and the guys at Fender. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way andy we would like to get the guitar back um here's here's the freeway ticket sure just send a really small urn <laughs> <laughs> oh dear oh dear i'm glad i didn't have that coffee yeah, it reminds me a bit of those like um, uh, mafia movies you know where people get kidnapped and then you know the people get sent just a finger or a hand or something. So you're I'm just sure sending the tuners. The, tun survive. Yeah. the tuners, yeah. <laughs> you're sending those back. <laughs> Let's just be clear. I'm not going to burn the Jazzmaster. This is a game. <laughs> Unless, of course, I stand to make a serious amount of money, which I could then buy another Jazzmaster with to send back to Fender. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, wow. That would Love get a lot it. of views, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, I... I bet you would get more views if you just, uh, you know, take that parachute and jump out of a plane and play that damn guitar. Yeah, but me plus guitar is even more weight. Regardless of how wonderfully sleek and lightweight the Jazzmaster Acoustic Sonic is. <laughs> Smooth. 
very Thank nice you. practicing yeah, making yeah. it up making it up yeah yeah, yeah. I'm dying right. to hear back from Charlie at Orange. I, I bet we're going to leave that on a cliffhanger. Um, do you have any news oh. for us, Dan, about our guest this yeah. evening? Yeah, I have some news. So Anthony already texted me back and he said he's super sorry, but he went on a business trip and forgot about the appointment. OMG. Yeah. He's filming out of town today, so he can't make it. And it was, and we can do that live because that's that's how we roll. He asked whether we wanted to, you know, do it next week or the week after that. So he's available throughout the next two weeks. Andy, you know our calendar much better than I do. I do. Do know we our already calendar. have a guest? Do we have a guest? We set are up for next on week? the twenty fifth, the first of June. We do not have a guest, so we can push him to the first. And I've just done it, so you should get an email. Um, therefore, <laughs> therefore, um, we can talk about anything. In fact, we could even bring Mikhail in on the show if he really wanted. That is that is what I was thinking to get him on the show. Um, so Mikhail, if you're still watching or pretending to, then um, <laughs> if you'd like to show off the fact that you are currently the boss, yeah, please put on pants and a shirt. Uh, when I was he wearing pants. When I spoke to him earlier, he had his shirt on. Okay. I think. Yeah, because we, we usually when when we do we do our tech routine, you know, we're completely naked or fully naked. Shirt. Just to make sure yeah. no one's wearing a wire. Yeah. <laughs> Recording for another podcast. <laughs> Moonlighting. <laughs> I'll get dressed. That's cool. Michiel so is gonna get dressed. Mm. We do the fader to fracture feature next week and um yeah, the I mean, feature? stuff like this happens. <laughs> Failure to fracture. Feature. Feature. I just like the way you said feature. it. That was amazing. Yeah, there we go. Failure to fracture uh, feature. Yeah, Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> Failure to... It's like no, a I can't do it. Failure to fracture, Failure to fracture feature. feature. Yeah. I'm the... Go. And if he had a small pet, it would be the Failure to Fracture feature creature. That is nice. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> That was really difficult. I really had to push myself. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if I could do it. I went for it, and I and I, I nailed it. Knocked it straight at the park. Uh, yeah. Would you? Um, would you feature oh, yeah. a failure to feature creature? <clears throat> Absolutely. I mean, it would have okay. to be house trained and and fully uh, insured. But apart from that, yeah, go for it. Cool. <laughs> I, I. The question now is, Dan, which shirt is Mikhail currently changing into? Because. He's got some absolute stonkers, and there's one <laughs> that I think he might be choosing. Okay, Poo Ninja is asking, where's Bob? Bob is here. Bob Bob had a little accident. No, what happened, Bob? Bob lost his hair. <gasps> wait, 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 wait a second. Can you just make sure that we see that your hair is actually real? No. I'm not falling for that. <laughs> falling for that again. Um, okay, so Mikhail is ready. Hopefully he's wearing headphones this time. Just let me know you're wearing headphones because we don't let anyone on the show that's not wearing headphones. He said earlier he was too lazy to get headphones. But uh, I don't believe that. He was just showing off, I think, because he wanted me on his loudspeakers. Mm. Um, Okie dokie. So I am texting Mikhail. The link to the show. So we are going to what have. Was, what was that all about? You looked like ah, uh, really? I don't know. I'm I'm just. <laughs> I've done things like this before. The last time this happened, we had a bunch of YouTubers invade us. Yeah, that was actually episode fourteen, the final episode of the first season, right? It was. We took a yeah. break after that. <laughs> <laughs> we had to. <laughs> to just get sane again. Yeah. All right. Um, so, so. Mikhail has the link. And um, if anyone else would like to join and they pass the test, maybe we let you in. You never know, Dan. You don't know these days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The test is to donate more than Mikhail has ever donated in in the whole term <laughs> of the Guitar Stories podcast, <laughs> which is probably about 400 bucks right now. <laughs> oh, I love it. So Michiel is just just plugging in his headphones or something. I don't know what he's uh, doing. 
you know what, Andy? What, what's good for next week? You can what's you that, can man? use the same you can use the same thumbnail and just like put something <laughs> over over it, like new date or <laughs> rescheduled. <laughs> what what can I do for the the thumbnail for this week then? What have we talked about? Probably Andy Burns a Jazzmaster Acoustasonic question mark. That's that's good YouTube fodder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's clickbaity enough. I mean, not as clickbaity as, but it's clickbaity enough. Yeah, yeah. Or oh well, something... well let's just, let's just see what happens with Mihil. Maybe we come up you with something know. that is that's even better. Guitar yeah. stories has naked guest. Actually, did you did we ever hear uh, Michiel's guitar stories? Probably not. No, Let's I see. mean he does have guitars. He's just um, a, a bassist. And Michiel, I've sent you the link to your WhatsApp, so I can see that you haven't read it yet. <laughs> How else would I send it to you? Um, so, Michiel, check your WhatsApp, my dude. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, that cough's come back. Uh, <laughs> Fergie in France, that's hilarious. Ten years and one week to learn a King, Crim King Crimson song. <laughs> <laughs> that's gold. That's gold. <laughs> Actually, we were, we were doing our homeworks. Andy and I were doing the homework, and we, we've been like listening to a couple of uh, King Crimson songs, and. Uh, that was quite a unique experience because I think the band dates back way before we were even born. Wasn't it like early 70s or so? I, I can't put a date on it, but I know that um, yeah, uh, it's about that, yeah. yeah so I can also uh, say, was... and I'll be quite honest, I'm not a fan. So I'm I'm no. really looking forward to talking to someone who is a fan because then, you know, opens my, my horizons. Um, why does mm. my horizons? Hmm. Mikhail is ready. Is everybody ready for Mikhail? He's yes. here. He's, he's in the guest room. I'm going to assign him to guest two. I'm going to go straight to. He's going to get. Should we give him the pre roll as well? Sure. Please. Mickey is in the house! Yay! Wait, I'll, I'll do it like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're wearing the Ironist shirt. That's nice. <laughs> of course I am. It's the only shirt I wear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're killing me. Nice. So, great to have you on the, on the podcast, man. <laughs> welcome, Finally. welcome to the show. <laughs> I, I bought yeah. myself in. It's just like Formula One. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So if you're in the chat, this is Mikhail Studio uh, Mikhail. No, Studio Shimil. Sorry, I fucked that up. And then if you're on the audio version, this is what a Belgian sounds like. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I am from Belgium. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, sorry. Set that up. I, I lost it. You look good, Mikhail. You look really healthy. <laughs> Um, I was just listening to the I'm too fat to jump out of an airplane. Well, <laughs> looks like I'm not jumping out of one either. <laughs> we have a request already from Valeria. Show Snooper Dog. Michiel has a dog. Is he sleeping? Um, Snooper Dog is only with me in the weekends. So, not possible. Oh, come on. Oh, wow. Sorry, everybody. What? Why is that? Fill us in. Uh, it's like a share, share a dog nice model? story. Yeah, okay. it is. <laughs> it's co-parenting. Um, co-parenting, yeah. yeah. a while back, uh, Leslie and Henning contacted me. Henning from HP42. Leslie works at an animal shelter. And they had a dog that dropped off there that was a vicious, I'll do it like this, vicious dog in German terms. Uh, what okay. had happened is the dog snapped at an old lady and she sued the owner. And in Germany, that means he's now a dangerous dog, which is an added tax of 600 euros a year. So wow. for a small shitty dog, that's hard to get him adopted anywhere. So they contacted me because they knew I always wanted a dog. And then I contacted my parents because... I knew 
he would benefit their lives and we set up the agreement that uh, I'll go get the dog. He lives with my parents during the week and I take care of him at the weekends. Well, that's a good deal. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And that now he shits kind of... all over their place and my place. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, Michael how old is Snooper Dog? French or... Sorry, Dan. Sorry. No, no, no. How, how old is Snooper Dog? Uh, he's five. Uh, he'll right, okay. turn six in August. All right. Okay, cool. Andy, say again. So, um, and, yeah, uh, uh, Michael uh, had a question. If you're from the French or Dutch part of Belgium. <laughs> I, I, I won't be pedantic. I'll go for the Dutch part. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I mean, the official languages are Dutch, French, and German, but we call them Flemish and Walloon or versions. But I'm from the Dutch speaking part, but I live literally five meters away from the French speaking part. Oh, wow. So, how now? Now, now here's the, the catchy question How would you mm. pronounce Goudon guitars? Go Dan. Go Dan. Uh, no. <laughs> Go Dan. Go Dan. Okay. Go Dan. <laughs> okay, still can't do it. Um, you've got wait, some guitars just behind a you. More emphasis on. Oh, I, I got all sorts of guitars. Do you want to talk about guitars or do you want to talk about bass? I think you know the answer uh, to that question. Yeah. Okay. Please. Sh should I do the <laughs> tour? Yeah, please. please. Actually, uh, please. let's let's have a tour uh, Alexa, of Mikhail's house. Turn on dining room. Let's do some more light. Um, let's start. I'll do it like this. Can you see the? Whoa, that's okay, a gold cool tub as it. well. Nice. Give you're us a little bit of details. Us, uh, yeah. Audio stuff. Okay. Well, actually, let let's start with the the most important one. That's a <laughs> tiny small Hofner. Which That's lives here here on my wall because <laughs> uh, I, I, I play this one every day. It's my practice guitar. It's what I use when I sit on the couch. Uh, no, actually, no. Let, let's start with the real fun stuff. <laughs> Look. Lightsabers. Lightsabers. Light swords. Laser nice. swords. Yes. What's that? Who, who's, whose lightsabers are these? These looks like like more Knights of the Old Republic stuff, like Revan. Uh, custom ones, so oh, wow. not okay. character specific yeah. ones. Have you but, have you yeah. checked out uh, the latest the latest um, the latest books, the latest Jedi books, Knights of the Old Re not uh, no, Knights of the Old Republic. What's that called? Nope. Uh, nope? Ah, the the these are last ones I read were. Um, People will get seasick. Uh, the Aftermath series. Oh, yeah, those were good as well. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So those let's hope that well. becomes a movie trilogy. Uh, as a uh, non Star Wars actually... book, hey, genuine question. Which book should I read first from the Star Wars books, having never read a Star Wars book? I'll uh, even show you the book. I have Star Wars books all over. And let's let, me, let, me make a a let me make a guess. You. Oh, wait. Yeah, I've already guess. said it. Maybe Thrawn? Uh, no? From a What's certain that? point of nope. view. Yeah. Those are 40 short stories to celebrate the 40th uh, release of Star Wars A New Hope. So oh, wow. it's all side characters and it's all famous authors and people that wrote a story about a character, for example, and that's absolutely the story I would recommend to read first. Uh, Will Wheaton wrote a story about the guy with the tracker on the moon base. So awesome. when the the Millennium Falcon passes by and you have that guy going, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> Will Wheaton wrote a story about that guy, and it's absolutely a wonderful story and the great thing about that book is it's 40 short stories so you can read as many as you want you can read just one in five minutes and it's nice and fun sounds like I've a great read... 40th birthday present <clears throat> well, <laughs> you know what andy i'll what? get it for you thank you that's very i'll get kind you that you. book 
<laughs> so should I talk more about guitars? Yes, do the tour. So, sorry for crowbarring my birthday. <laughs> no, no. Star Wars <laughs> is never a detour. So back to the <laughs> guitars. Uh, the gold top is a Maybach. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. Regular pickups, then, so no mini humbuckers? Okay. No, uh, very classic -y. Is it uh, heavy? Only the, the... one change, the buttons, because I like those gold dome buttons with a chrome inlay. Yeah, dome and it matches nice. the guitar much better. Yeah, it yeah. does. It really is does. It, it, is it heavy? How much does it weigh, roughly? Less than an actual Les Paul, but still hefty enough. Okay. Is it the Spirit of 59 pickups in there? Yeah. Yeah, that's what's... I, I have the... the so well, what do I know? Lester. <laughs> <laughs> They're the ones that are also I mean, in my it, SG. So. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure that the first four strings are in tune. I have no idea what the other two are for. Me neither, mate. Me neither. <laughs> it's you and me both. Okay, take, it, take us further. Oh. Take us further. What else have we got? Then... I have a Dearmand M75T for the tremolo uh, because the guitarist of my favorite Belgian band, Hoover Phonic, had one of those, so had to get one. Uh, wow. As I'm a big Shadows fan, this is a Burns Barracuda, which mm. is their bass six, which wow. is quite nice. It's a combination of a guitar and a bass, basically. <laughs> basically. <laughs> I'm so fucking funny. Sorry, I said an oddy word on the podcast. Uh, you're, the, then, you're the first effort. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going from a full basics to a baritone, uh, the Gretsch, the, the Electromatic series. Yeah, very nice, mm. very nice, very Go nice. Going over to a parts caster, telecaster with... Uh, uh, Nick Silver pickups, very suggested nice pickups. by a certain guitar geek. Oh, <laughs> with a very very fat neck. Is it and, part uh, Baja? This one is telly. actually for sale. It's, it's for sale. It's you got a telly for sale? Uh, is it a Baja? Yeah, this one. Uh, uh, it's a part caster. So neck is a replacement. Body is from a Squire classic vibe. Whatever their ancient one was. Uh, all the metal parts are relics, and then the yeah the the pickups are the the silver ones. Hmm. Okay. Make me an offer. <laughs> uh, then move it down, but still figuring out what to do with it. Uh, Dan Electro also. Mm -hmm. Very nice, very nice. And that gets purely for cashmere. Cashmere. Yeah. <laughs> but, but seeing the history of. The Dan Electro Company, I'm actually looking for a big-ass bright sticker just to counteract the stupid ways the owner, the current owner of that brand now thinks. Dan, um, maybe Dan knows what this is. Nah, no clue. It looks like a gorgeous piece of gear, but I have no clue what it could be. I don't know, fill us in. Well, uh, <laughs> it's also just wall, wall decoration, but it's a wonderful... Uh, yeah. Ibanez AZ22, and I have no idea what the rest of the name is. <laughs> Got a Bocote, Bocote top. It's a 224BC, 224BC, Bocote. Gold hardware. I'll believe you. Yeah, uh, going knob. down did you, did a bit, that did you is change another pick? Ibanez. Did you change the knobs on the AZ2? Yep. Uh, looked oh, for right. something more brassy like uh, the bridge. Wow. Okay. Looks good. Thank you. Can uh, I ask, Michiel, how many guitars it... do you have? How many do you have? Because um, maybe we should just go for some of your favorites, because I know you have a, a serious amount. Of... I want to hear your guitar story rather than see every one of your guitars. Well, uh, should we make a full episode on that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> You've got to pay a little bit more if, for if that, it's sonny, Jim. A colleague, I usually go with, what do you call a lot? What do you call... A lot, a lot, and what do you call stupid a lot? Because it's above that. And for me, currently, and my best estimate is somewhere between 50 and 60. But that's guitars, <laughs> basses, 
ukuleles, all the stuff. So okay. let's go my for friend, the... My friend Jürgen oh. sent me something today. Hang on. I can maybe share it with you to answer that question, how much is a lot. How many guitars should a normal person have? About five. That sounds like a guitar enthusiast to me. No, a guitar enthusiast has 15. That sounds like someone who's obsessed with guitars. No, people obsessed with guitars have hundreds. That sounds like a psycho. No, psychos seldom own guitars or just get one or two. That sounds like a normal person, though. No, a normal person has about five. We've already got <laughs> So I'm somewhere between obsessed and a psychopath, which sounds reasonable, right? Right for me. Sounds anyway, right. let's do the quick fire round. Uh, 77 original Fender Stratocaster, nice. then a regular Burns guitar. Then I absolutely love what I did with this Harley Benton 7 string. Then some weird ass blue, not a signature, but it's a signature guitar. <laughs> um, S -s -signature, art might... signature artists get royalties. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'll do it like this this is prepped for when i get my tone fox which will look like that that's the custom designed one which like i will you, absolutely love i find it amazing yeah, that you go. already have like a placeholder for the guitar that where it's supposed to go <laughs> I, dan you've met me i'm kind of just yeah. a little bit ocd Yes, I know where it's going to go. <laughs> uh, Cobain Mustang. Not Ooh, really. Nice. It's it's a Japanese Mustang, but I upgraded it to a Cobain one. Then we have the bluegrass instruments. Well, the, the, the ukulele, not really, but banjo guitar, mandolin, and resonator guitar. Going over to the acoustics with a Ramirez R1 Spanish classical guitar, oh, my nice. regular Hudson uh, acoustic, another Ibanez. Oh, uh, where's the jingle? acoustic bass? <laughs> a small <laughs> one, a uh, 12 string round body, and a uh, jazz style uh, Manouche guitar because I'm Belgian. so naturally i have to have something that reminds me of django reinhardt then mm. and it, it's not that i have a favorite brand but i do think it's a very good brand maybe dan still recognizes this guitar mm -hmm. nice but got it after gitcom going mm -hmm. to this one <laughs> that was actually, which i got yeah. Uh, yeah sorry you go ahead that, no, no, I was just about to that say uh, that was one of my f most favorite jazz guitars, basically. I think we, we talked about that at, at, uh, at Gitcom, mm -hmm. probably, right? Yeah, yep, yeah indeed. So. Uh, wait. Uh, uh, yeah, so mm -hmm. then this one <laughs> bought after 42 Gear Street with a changed <laughs> big art because red looks a lot better than what it had. And I think also changed knobs. And actually, uh, Yoshi Lang did, a, a, did some work on it for me, so now it has uh, these very, very nice graphic tuners locking ones, ratios, All right. which is probably, if I would have bought them full price, about the same as the rest of the guitar. <laughs> and, and then... True, very true. What I, what I would call my nicest guitar is this one. A the Angelico Deluxe, very nice with a Bigsby in flat red, and that's flat. just so mm -hmm. awesome. Then we're still not there, but let's only do the ones <laughs> on the ground floor. <laughs> uh, these three <laughs> are all 10s guitars. <laughs> hey, can you see? It? Yeah, yeah, so um. S-type with uh, custom wiring and a kill switch. The wiring is uh, neck pickup, neck and middle, all three, uh, the neck and the bridge, and uh, uh, just the bridge, because I wanted a crazy wiring. Uh, okay. Tele, fully custom, classic with P90s and a Bigsby, and then that's just in stock, Less bold type, but with a custom inlay kind of thing on right. top. And then we get to the bases. Do we still have some time? <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, 
So that was um, a nice I, episode I number. Believe 40. it's we're <laughs> running out of. Uh, uh, after the bases, I also have some Lego, but I really have to pass by the bases to get to the Lego. Ah, uh, sorry. Well, no we, we have today. a gear exclusive. <laughs> sorry to interrupt you guys, but I've been talking to Charlie Cooper from Orange. Okay. I actually invited to come on the show and do the gear exclusive himself, if that um, appeals to anybody. So if anyone wants mean, to my... well, actually I, Am I still hear... the boss because... I mean, if I'm the boss, I think I'm more important than actual guitar use and guitar stories. <laughs> so we, we have a, an exclusive orange pedal announcement. Um, Today. Okay, Tonight. so Andy, Andy, right, right who now. do you like better, orange as a company or me as a friend? Dude, don't do that to me. You know how much I love orange. <laughs> <laughs> I really would like to talk about my nice bases, but I, I get it, and you have to do your job. It's important to you, so I'll like my, I'll, I'll I'll understand. Mikhail, Mikhail, I didn't say you had to leave. No, I You'll just, just said mute me. <laughs> I'll just yeah, you can just st stand near your bases. Um, I think I think that we should have a a listener and viewers episode. And I think that we should do that. Oh, come on. Don't don't go near the sandbag. Um, Dan, what do you think about having um, having a, a listener and viewer episode where we get to see other people's guitar stories um, I love it. And, and bass stories? Oh, Charlie's just sent me a picture. Um, I, w I would love to do that, like to have the, the, the viewer's episode. Every, every viewer gets to pick like his most precious instruments and tells us the guitar story behind that. I would love to do that. And then we have a special section. We can kick it off with McKeel's basses, which we're getting a nice little... Whoa, stop on that sparkly one. A nice little uh, <laughs> preview, preview of now. Um, Charlie is saying choose him as a friend, but... You know. <laughs> no, Andy, but, you know, but, you know go pedals. for it. It's... <laughs> <laughs> so how are you going to do that? Um, uh, Charlie's obviously listening and oh God. Oh God, I know what it is. Right, sorry, okay. I was in the pedal. Um, I, I have, you know, hang on, here we go. I've sent Charlie the link. Um, Charlie just needs to open that link in some kind of web browser, possibly his phone. He needs to wear headphones. Um, time to get some orange branding in there in that case. <laughs> and um, in the meantime, Mikhail has as long as it takes Charlie to get on the show to talk about bases. Go! Okay. Uh, fully aged blue Sandberg mm -hmm. jazz. And he wow. knows this one because he played it and everyone at TGU wanted that bass. I, get, I got home with it. My first custom bass, also fully by Sandberg, smaller headstock, has a detuner, nothing special wow. there. Cool, Another cool custom. inlays. Did you did you pick that did you pick that by accident or was it like a conscious yeah. decision to go with no, this? No, 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 that, that was a very conscious decision because that was the hardest part for Sandberg to do. They don't do those, so they really had to stretch what they know and look into how to doing shark fin inlays. But yeah, that was absolutely a custom choice. And I'm pretty certain that's the only Sandberg with them. And I don't think they will ever do it again. <laughs> it was a pain in the neck for them. <laughs> now, fretless standard jazz bass by Sandberg. Very cool eight string bass by Sandberg. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. Question, question, question. Uh, what do you yeah? prefer, playing, playing fretless or playing with frets on the bass, of course, not on the guitar? Uh, absolutely wet frets because I'm already a bad play bass player as it is <laughs> so i don't have the finesse to actually play nice on a fretless it's fun it's cool and you can do the weird woo sound yeah. but that's not playing bass <laughs> playing bass for me is within these five frets and you don't do anything with all the rest you don't actually need that but just to side, but to side Carol K, I think she said that's where the money sits. You know, the first five frets. Yeah, but Carol K also sadly says that Trump is a great person and a great president. <laughs> let's start. <laughs> let's start I, I told there. you, Dan. I told you we shouldn't have done this. 
<laughs> of course, you mean Michael Trump, the president of that country that no one's ever heard of. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, um, I, I wouldn't use this platform to deliver my own personal views on policies abroad. Good, good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, okay. I heard she said do, how did Trump Belgium do? is a great instrument. How did Belgium right? do in the Eurovision? Sorry, <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, Mikhail. Charlie's with us. Oh, sorry. Uh, so Charlie's now in the green room. He's wearing a pair of headphones and your base time okay. is up. Um, I'm going to assign him as guest three. This is amazing fun, by the way, being able to do this. And yeah. um, ladies and gentlemen, it is, wait a minute, guest chat, unlock it. Charlie Cooper from Orange Amps. Charlie, hello. Hey. Hey, guys. hey, everyone. Hello, Charlie. Everybody. Hey guys, sorry for crashing the party. <laughs> yeah, how dare you? How dare you with this good pedal news? <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought I'd send you a little exclusive a little uh, snippet of what we're doing. So, uh, Andy's got the picture. Feel free to do. Feel free to show it. I will. Um, do you have it? You don't have this pedal with you then, in that case. Uh, no, it's currently uh, being tested for EMC right now. So that's a picture from. Um, uh, the EMC uh, center. Okay, just let us know what what is EMC. Uh, electromagnetic conductive. So, essentially, every product that we do, every product we make, we have to send it up to a testing facility to make sure that it doesn't unintentionally uh, create uh, noise to nearby devices. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. All right. So, are, Sorry, are you just... ready, everybody? Sorry, Dan. wait, 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 wait. Sorry. yeah. Let, let's just start off because I'm I'm pretty sure that everyone will be will be in the picture um, who Charlie is. Could you give us like in a couple sentences just some information about who you are, what you do, and and uh, why you, you share that secret stuff with Andy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so um, my name is Charlie Cooper, I'm the marketing director at Orange Amplifiers. Uh, Orange is a family company. My dad founded it in 1968. And um, so I've kind of been with the company my entire life. Uh, and Andy gets all this secret goodness um, just because he's English. That's it. So that's it. <laughs> Pure nationalism. <laughs> Finally, some benefits. Uh, okay. <laughs> also, we missed out. Charlie's a really nice guy and like, cool to hang out with. And we'll make it happen again at some point. Um, one thing I don't have in this sound bank is um, uh, a drum roll, but uh, here we go. Bing. That's it. So, Charlie, <laughs> you said it's based on some of your pedals from the 70s. So, um, so the story goes is we used to make, uh, Orange used to make orange pedals back in the 70s, right? But we had an issue. Um, <clears throat> so, so I remember the story. Uh, we... Uh, in the early days, we wanted to uh, expand our range, and we also wanted to go into different shops. However, a lot of shops wouldn't actually accept us. They'll say, oh, no, we've already got Marshall. We've already got Vox amplifiers. We don't want to sell orange amplifiers. So initially in the 70s, the idea of these pedals was really just a foot in the door. So they're like, okay, well, okay, you've got an amplifier brand. Uh, you should have some orange pedals because then you know we're not these aren't amplifiers we're selling you this would be our foot in the door product so uh, we did those at the time and then they kind of people just forgot about them so um for like a long time no one really knew that we did pedals in the 70s and then we uh then i think what happened how do we actually end up doing it again um i think uh, we had someone on social media uh, post about uh, orange pedals and then we did the orange book as well where we go through the history of the company and people found out more about the pedals and then well, we asked a question on, on social media uh, what do you think of this picture because we managed to find some old like a picture of an old orange pedal people said they loved it and that we should bring it back so we said okay well we'll look into it we'll see uh, if we can find more of these original orange pedals um, let's see if we can find the schematics. So we had people message us, send us dimensions, send us photos of their pedals, tell us, um, send us photos of the insides. And because we actually still have some of the original stuff um, back uh, from the 70s with us, we managed to find like tea stained schematics of the original pedals. So 
Adrian then started work on it, and essentially he's designed three orange pedals, um, which are uh, essentially reissues of these original 70s, but he's made a few changes to them to make them better for the modern musicians. So, for example, you'll find that the input and the output are on the reverse side, because a lot of vintage pedals um, had them um, in a different position, and modern pedals um, have them uh, in another position. So, um, yeah, we, we shared a picture of uh, some progress of just like some metal casings. Uh, people shared that and said, this is amazing, would like more information. So uh, since then, uh, this is the next update. So there's the picture of uh, an actual orange prototype um, going into uh, EMC testing. Excellent. I, I'm very honored, Charlie, firstly, to have you here, but also because I was one of those people who said, yes, you should definitely make it. And I remember the social media <laughs> post. I remember seeing it. I, I, um, for those who can't see it, if you listen to the audio version, it says, I'm guessing it says orange because we, we can only see Rang in the middle of the pedal. Uh, there's a yeah. foot switch. It says sustain underneath it. It's a two knob thing. So I'm guessing fuzz, which a few people in the chat are guessing fuzz. Um, are we right? Um, no, let's just say uh, sustain pedal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, the um, the three pedals um the three pedals will be able to give you a bit more info a bit later on. <laughs> Shut up, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there are three pedals that are going into production. Is one of them a fuzz pedal? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> So, <clears throat> is it uh, what is, uh, yeah, Carry on, Dan. Yeah. I'm just going to take a break for a moment. <laughs> I was, I was, I'm pretty sure we wanted to say the same. Like, Charlie, can you shed some light? What's the sustain pedal about? Is it an always on pedal that's just like adding, adding like the name says, some, some sustain to the overall tone? Or is it some, some kind of uh, effects pedal? What, what can you do with it? Like, all the range from, <laughs> from pretty subtle to, to, Everything um, on 11. Um, so I can't, uh, there isn't too much I can give out about the pedal at the moment. I haven't been able to try out the pedal and I haven't been able to speak to Aid about what he's changed about the pedal. So um, I literally, a lot of the, uh, that will come out in due course. I'm really just, my, my, uh, my goal here is really just to kind of show a bit of what we've been doing here and just kind of keep the rumor mill going. <laughs> well, the rumor is that it's a fuzz pedal. <laughs> 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 um, just to also shed some more light adrian is the amp designer right or, or more, he's so much more than that but he's the main man behind the designs of orange products at the moment yeah that's right um so um he, he designs all of our gear um pretty much like 99 percent of our gear like um uh, everything from he joined the company in the uh, um, in the nineties when the company was sold to Gib, uh, Gibson or licensed to Gibson. Um, my dad then got the brand back, and one of the first um, um, changes he, he did was actually hire Adrian uh, to kind of rejuvenate the brand and bring new products. So um, he's been with the company maybe um, I think longer than twenty years. <laughs> wow. wow, he's proper old school. I love Adrian. He is like the like the roadie in Wayne's World, like the classic <laughs> London rocker. He's, he's an amazing guy. Um, please pass yeah. on my regards. But last time we spoke on video, uh, he talked about the pedal baby, and um, it wasn't ready to be announced at the time. So uh, I rather graciously uh, had to, not had to, let me put that <coughs> clear. I offered to remove the video because it was giving it information that it shouldn't have. And um, yeah. Yeah, I got in, we, we didn't get in trouble, but it was certainly funny to to notice that I put a video online with some very <laughs> secret information and nobody cared. Nothing <laughs> happened. The Internet did not blow up. I would hope that if it's, that were the case today, that would be that would be different. <laughs> it's kind of a common theme, isn't it, Andy? Like, uh, yeah, we often, um, myself included, will just say too much about something. And then we're like, oh, wait, we should actually make sure that our distributors know about this first. <laughs> yeah, well, they don't, and we do, because we're great, and they're not. Yep. <laughs> right, no, everyone's great. <laughs> right. uh, anyway. um, 
so you, there are three pedals. Um, none of them are a fuzz. Okay. Are any of them a drive? Um, so I'm not at liberty to say that uh, there might be, and I guess <laughs> they'll find out soon. I'm I'm being very restrictive on what I can and can't say, and so I was like, I can share yeah. a picture. I can say a bit about that, and so okay. some of the story behind it. So. Uh, I thought I'd just come on and just give you guys a quick um, sneak peek. That's pretty cool. When are they? It can be so. Yeah. When are they due? Are they re being released June first, or what's what's your schedule? Like? Um, so um, we're looking to release them some point this year. Um, it's okay. essentially the pandemic has kind of like changed things uh, in terms of our, our release schedule, and so essentially uh, products are being pushed back or others mm -hmm. brought forward. It's Honestly, Panda was kind of made a mess of things, so I haven't really got an accurate time for when these All pedals right. are going to be out. <laughs> but okay. uh, I can tell you that actually these pedals are going to be made um, in the uh, UK, so um, oh, wow. these aren't going to be um, uh, China pedals. Oh, Great. wow, that's so okay. It's kind of, yeah, trying to make it a bit more like the original pedals that were made in uh, the UK as well. So if we're going to do like an honest representation, kind of makes sense to uh, keep it. Um, uh, keep it here. <laughs> wow, that's. If I'm I can excited. ask a question, yeah, will all three pedals be orange? Yes, and uh, for these pedals, we'll be using uh, this uh, the old orange logo that was only used on these pedals and nothing else. <laughs> nice. So it's like a, a pedal version of Guess Who. <laughs> <laughs> will they all be orange? Not a fuzz. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a drive. Is it wearing a hat? <laughs> Do you know, it's really ironic actually. This is probably the first pedal that because we we do other pedals as well, but this is probably like the first orange pedal we've done in ages, like an actual pedal that's coloured orange. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm excited. Um, what do the people in the chat think? Because. Uh, there, you know, you can. It's easy to impress us guys, but uh, what about the actual people in the chat? Who, who, McKeel is kind of in in both camps right now. He's in the chat and he's on screen. Um, I'd love to know. People are excited, and and uh, can you pantomime? Okay, I want to know what's going on there. But yeah, thank you for coming on the show. This this is this is exciting. Pleasure. Uh, so there you go. There's your exclusive, Andy. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I will now, you know, wait for this video to absolutely blow up, and and <laughs> yeah, I, I hope yeah, that uh, hope you haven't got yourself in trouble with anybody. <laughs> I, I think I'll be alright, guys. Cheers, though. <laughs> anyway, well, I'll leave it there. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks for coming on the show. We'll um, yeah. we'll have you again sometime. I, yeah, I know for a fact that you've got an interesting guitar story. Ooh. Pleasure, guys. And I'll catch okay. you guys later, all right? Yep. Bye, Charlie. Cheers. Bye, Charlie. Cheers. Bye. Bye. That was pretty cool. That was awesome. Oh, hang on. mikhail has got a pedal on his face. <laughs> there we go. So, yeah, that was awesome. I'm not only did we get to talk to Charlie, um, but there's a new pedal coming out, and it's not a fuss. But, uh... <laughs> that was still hilarious. Can I assume it is a fuss? No. No, it's a sustain <laughs> because it says sustain. <laughs> well, the th the things I do for you guys and your laughter. <laughs> so okay, let's cool. let's play let's play a game, guys. Let's play a game of what yeah. will it be? So we've got sustain, which has got to be distortion. some sort of yeah, the distortion. What, uh, what were the original pedals? The original uh, phaser. Or, or there was a phaser or a flanger. Um, distortion, compressor, mm -hmm. and compressor. I, isn't sustain? Isn't that a compressor? I, I, I'd I, say I, no. I suddenly know nothing about pedals. It, it appears. Distortion. What was it? Distortion? You've been watching too many of Henning's videos, and you forget stuff. You need to watch yeah. a quality channel. Like Hotball Studios, which makes even longer videos than Henning does. Phaser six hours. Distortion, yeah. 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 What oh, does the way, sustain the... do? If it's if it sustains oh. notes, then surely it must be 
Impressive. I bet you I can make it into a fuzz. There's a challenge for you, Orange Amps and Charlie. <laughs> I'm going to make it fuzz. Um, yeah, well, I've had a blast tonight, and um, I, I, I think we should probably end on a high, which is going to be, you know, this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! Hang on, this go. this is the Ibanez noise. There you go. There we go. Well, um, Dan, we're going to be joined next week by Anthony Garon. I'm still going to learn how to pronounce his name by the time the show actually comes along. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which gives you guys a whole week to listen to the song "Fracture" by King Crimson. Um, yep. I, I'm excited because I am not a fan by far of of the song. Or the band. It's it's just so out of my, my wheelhouse. It's, it couldn't be further than something I, I enjoy. And I'm hoping mm -hmm. that list, and, uh, listening to, to Anthony talk about his book and the song, that I'm going to, you know, not fall in love, but certainly have my world uh, expanded a little bit, because that's always fun. Yeah, that'll be interesting. And uh, I think we'll have some more gear news too. Oh, oh, oh! Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. We we might. We might. Yeah, and uh, we'll be one week closer to me being forty. So uh, there'll be some more oh, yeah. prizes announced, and Maybe we're probably going to talk about prizes. the launch of your fortieth uh, anniversary, fortieth <laughs> birthday, and forty k campaign. Right. Yeah. How it's going. Yeah. So I yeah, will yeah, launch yeah. it this uh, week. Yes. Quick question, without knowing what the actual three pedals will be, which one will you burn, which one will you borrow, and which one will you buy? I'm going and to... you can't say the orange one. I wasn't going to. <laughs> I'm the get... originals were phasers. First, I have to put the sustainer into the distortion to make it fuzz. Once I've done that, <laughs> I can truly decide. Okay. Then I will burn the phaser because... I already have a few phases, and I just have to choose it. Sorry, Charlie. Unless, of course, it changes my life. Then I will have to buy the distortion and borrow the com the sustainer. Just, you know, just yeah. because. I wonder if the sustainer will could could have the potential to be some sort of always-on pedal. You know, there are some pedals like the TC Spark or others. That are just you know you can just put them on or the TSV eight hundred eight that you can you know you put them on and they they improve every amp. Thank you. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Guess what? Fergie in France has just sent me a picture of the old pedals. We just get that on screen before we leave. Um, yeah. uh, there we go. Hang on. Got to say, loving this new interface because I can do stuff that I couldn't do last time. And the chances of me screwing it up have reduced slightly. <laughs> so the go. orange phaser, the orange sustain, the orange distortion, and the voice box. Which looks oh, like wow, I'm intrigued. Talk talk Is that talk box? What yeah, it must be. It's got a it's got a tubey input. What um, but as Charlie mentioned, there's the inputs and the outputs are on the other way around on uh uh, on these original pedals. Thank you, Fergie and France, for sending these these pictures over. So, so they are really British pedals. Left and right got switched. <laughs> they are That's around the way correct way. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, phaser, you've just got a speed knob, and then the the sustain, you've got a depth and a level. What it looks like uh, distortion, you've got depth and level, and then voice box, you've got a hole to put your sweets in. So <laughs> the tube, because you can't share tubes in Corona times. True, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Google rules. We, think how there intelligent we'd be if we thought we could have Googled that. Thank you, Fergie and France. <laughs> I am super excited about those pedals because pedals. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sarang will end us off with buy distortion, bar sustain, burn phaser. I think that was my answer. All yeah. right. Right, a brother from another mother. Uh, Mikhail, do you want to show us one more bass just before we leave? That's the encore. That's the encore. Sounds like a Patreon exclusive if we had a Patreon. Should yeah. we have a Patreon? Nah, I'm good. Okay. You're good? 
All you right. do have a Patreon, and I'm already paying you each. <laughs> it's yeah, a life I have a Patreon, but we could have a guitar stories Patreon, and then you know, <laughs> Dan could take his twenty percent. <laughs> Fair share. Fair. <laughs> Fair share. All right, guys. <laughs> no, no. One last thing. Five power open. Andy Dan or uh, Well, I'm obviously going to going to buy McKeel. I'm going to borrow Dan. I'm going to burn myself. Oh, well, you're a gentleman. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Dan, any final thoughts about asking people to give us five stars or anything like that? Yeah, always. I mean, make sure to give Andy a thumbs up on the channel. Make sure you, you are subscribed and you have the bell switched on. Make sure your neighbor is subscribed to Andy's channel. I think that's the most important part nowadays. And uh, if you have some time, take your girlfriend's, your wife's, or your mother's cell phone and give us a five star ratings on iTunes. You know. And apart from that, looking forward to see and hear all of you next week. I think that was a very interesting, spontaneously <laughs> uh, proof that we can talk uh, out of our bums for uh, two hours. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. 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 Like spontaneously. I, I mean, if you have someone to help you across the line yeah <laughs> thank you Mikhail. With so many you, people, Mikhail, yeah you were the glue that held this show together and i thank you for that yeah the social That's why glue. I sit between the two of you the rose <laughs> i represent two thorns. the people in a world of thorns you are a rose <laughs> <laughs> oh like well, one thing thinking of something not going to go there <laughs> Oh, uh, Mikhail's just What's lost that? another five points. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Okay, um, well, what? thank you ever so much for tuning in today, tonight, this do, evening, do this morning. Do I keep morning. these points for next week? Or do I'm I not do... sure if you keep the points. I'm not sure if you, I'm not sure how it works. Uh, we shall find out. Tune in next week to find out if Mikhail is <laughs> could, still could king of the podcast. Could we not close the podcast? Could we just not, just keep it open so I stay on top <laughs> for a whole week? Hell no. Hell no, my friend. <laughs> okay, well, thank you to people for all the super chats and for knocking me off the throne. Maybe I'm back And, and, and what week. if I, like, bid two extra euros? Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Mikhail just left the chat. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I, I didn't mean to do that. I just clicked the button. And, um... <laughs> oh, boy. All right, Dan, I miss you. I will see you soon. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Stories Podcast, your number one show for everything guitar.